What's going on internet? IG here again today. Today I'm going to be going with part two of the cloud-based operating systems and that would of course be with Jolly Cloud OS, more specifically the recent release of Jolly Drive. <laughs> Okay, now the Jolly Cloud operating system, or Jolly OS, has been around for a little while. And basically, it's a core operating system that's based on Ubuntu 10.04. Yes, it is a bit old. And they tack on the HTML5 web-based interface, which you can actually log into on any number of web browsers on any number of computers. So Jolly OS just provides a core operating system for the Jolly Cloud or Jolly Drive web interface to sit on top of. Now, I did do a review of Jolly OS 1.2 when it came out, so you can check a link uh, here down in the description box or I'll put an annotation as well but that'll explain more about the core operating system itself because since that release it hasn't really changed much what has changed is the HTML5 web base and that's what we're going to be having a look at today as it has now evolved into Jolly Drive integrating both Jolly Cloud then a whole bunch of your other cloud services into one cloud-based operating system so let's check it out so if you've installed Jolly OS then this is what you're going to see now, of course, if you use the web interface alone by going to my.jollydrive.com, then you're going to see a bit of a different interface. But essentially, it revolves around the same thing in that you have web apps through the middle here, just like you would with uh, Chrome or Chrome OS. And then you have your different services down the side here. Now, this is where I think Jolly Drive really excels. It is a locally installable operating system. So you can see here, I do have a hard drive with a bit of a file browser here, similar to what you'd see in Chrome OS. But then you have, of course, the web apps in the launcher here. You also have local apps, which are available on the installed system locally. And if you do want to install further applications locally on the system, you can simply run the Synaptic Package Manager. And then you can store, install whatever you want, really, based on the Ubuntu 10.04 repositories. And with the recent inclusion of Jolly Drive, you get a simple one-click solution to all of the cloud services that you have, be they online storage or Facebook or Google+, Instagram, you name it. You can tie them all in here, either as online storage, like you would with Box or Dropbox, or even Google Drive. And you can see here, I've got four different online storage accounts. I've got social networking accounts and YouTube there as well. And adding new services is easy. You just hit the add new services button. You get a list of ones to choose from. Some of them are available to add in just via, uh, just by sharing uh, Jolly Drive and what Jolly Drive is capable of. You can see here Ubuntu One also gets a mention. And then once you add them to your Jolly Drive account, then they show up here on the side and it's very easy to access them instead of opening separate web browser tabs. Now you probably are gonna notice that these web apps are just going to open up a simple web interface uh, using the Chromium web browser framework. So of course, most of this is gonna be dependent on a solid internet connection. You do have basic window management abilities here as far as just minimizing, maximizing, and closing individual windows. And like I said, this is very dependent on your internet connection. So it's not like Peppermint OS, the previous review in the cloud-based operating systems that I did, in that this is almost useless without an internet connection. Apart from a handful of local apps that you can install if you want, it's not really much point up beyond that. However, the perks that you do get of having Jolly Drive and all of your online accounts synchronized and integrated into the system makes it very, very attractive for a light portable machine that you might want to take on the go with you. I really do like Jolly Cloud from the beauty aspect of it. It's a very well designed operating system. It has some very nice icons and some very nice user experience tweaks along the way. But the fact that it is tied to the internet can make it quite sluggish at times. Now, if you want to add new web apps, there's a simple app center here that's very nicely categorized as far as native apps, add-ons, and then all of the web apps that you've come to know and love. As you can see, Jolly OS native apps brings up VLC, web browser, Skype, Dropbox, Client, Thunderbird, all the, all the famous open source um, programs that we all come to know and love. So you can do the basics here, even if you don't have an internet connection. But as far as an aggregation of all the services that you use, I think they will increase the amount of services that they support as time goes on. But it's great to see that the direction that Jolly Cloud is heading in, uh, especially advancing from what they were as uh, Jolly Cloud 1.2 onto Jolly Drive. And uh, Jolly OS is just a great way to experience that on a very low power consuming machine. So let me know what you guys think of Jolly OS and their recent launch of Jolly Drive down in the comment section below. To me, I actually like the idea. It's a really well designed interface and it integrates all of the cloud services that you already use, making it really quick and easy to access all of those online storage and social networking accounts that you have spread across the internet. 
And if you have that hooked up on like a very light portable machine, I think it works quite well. As always, keep the suggestions coming in the comments section below and hit that like button if you liked the video and indeed subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis. And I shall see you all next week. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.